Adventures of Richard Wagner. Chapter 1. Boom, 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 bang, boom, zing. The people in the Dresden Theater sat up, startled. Who would dream of pounding on the bass drums right in the middle of the play? Not a single word could anyone hear, and waves of angry buzzing darted from row to row. What a frightful noise! Dreadful! An evil monster at work somewhere! The poor actors on the stage could not believe their ears. How would anyone dare to play such a trick in the largest hall of the great city? Ludwig Gaia shouted his lines above the din and strode from the platform, a stern gleam in his eyes. Frantically, he darted through the dressing rooms, calling as he searched, Dicker! Dicker! Come out, I say! He came upon the small drummer suddenly. In a far corner of the storeroom, under the stage, four-year-old Richard stood on a low box, his blue eyes glowing like stars. A stout stick was in each hand as he beat with all his strength on the giant drums, ending with a ringing crash on the golden cymbals. Bang! Boom! Zing! Dicker! The short arms stopped in mid-air, and bright laughter pealed through the dim room. Listen, father, I can play almost as loud as old Nell's. Ludwig seized the sticks and swept the drummer boy from the stand. Enough! You have ruined the play with your pounding, he cried. Look, the audience is leaving the theater. What a horrible day for us all. Two curious blue eyes were glued to the peephole. It was true. Long lines of people were moving through the aisles to the doors. But more terrible by far were the solemn words over the fair head. No playhouse for you for many a day, young man. The punishment was greater than he could bear. Choking sobs filled his throat as Richard followed the tall figure through the darkening, snowy streets of Dresden. No more bright lights and music and dancing. No trunks to explore with wigs and funny shoes and strange masks that made chills of fright scamper up his spine. No romping with the actors and sitting in the orchestra pit with the men. But above all, he would not be with his actor stepfather, whom he loved more than anyone in the whole world. Playhouse tomorrow? The small voice behind the lean figure never stopped its pleading. No playhouse. The final answer cut still deeper into the heart of the weeping drummer boy. Mother Gaia looked anxiously at her young son, as through the dinner, even with the coaxing of his older brothers and sisters, no food would he touch. Come, small one, bed is the only place to end such a dreadful day as this. Ludwig swung the little figure to his shoulder and followed Mother Gaia's flickering candle up the narrow stairway. Tucked under the warm blankets, Richard's troubles were ended at last, and as the blue eyes closed, Ludwig turned anxiously to his companion. Strange, Hanna, that the will of this child is so strong, he mused. You do not think that I have been too harsh with the lad. He felt a hand slip into his own. Ah, no, my dear, a kind and patient father you have been since you came into our home two short years ago. The children could not love you more, nor I. Ludwig's arm encircled the slender shoulders, and together they looked back at the sleeping child. A little secret just for your ears, good wife. Of all the children, this is the one nearest my heart. I feel a star rising in this boy. Where it will lead him, I know not. Ah, Hannah, what a bright, stirring spirit is here. The days were long indeed for young Richard, as he sat at the window for hours, watching for his father to return from the theater. At the first sight of the jaunty figure swinging through the pale shadows, he sprang through the doorway to throw himself into the outstretched arms. Laughing and crying in the same breath, he rode on the strong shoulders, chattering like a magpie. Did the actors miss me, Father? And the people clapped hard today? And did they find the right costume with the red wig for Big Hans?